Hi guys, so I'm here today to tell you my thoughts on the books I read in the second half of July. I did do a mid-month reading wrap-up as I usually do uh, to tell you my reviews for the books I've read in the first half of the month that I'll link down below, but these are the rest of the things I read, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, let me just get into reviewing them. So the book I finished most recently is a graphic novel that I got for review of NetGalley and that is Mooncakes by Suzanne Walker and illustrated by Wendy Zhu. I didn't really know what I was getting myself into when I requested this one for, for review, only that the description sounded interesting and I was in the mood for a graphic novel, but this was so adorable and completely warmed my heart. It actually really reminded me of the comic book Moonstruck that I really enjoy and have mentioned a few times on this channel, but it is a fantasy graphic novel which follows two main characters. We have a young witch in her, I, I don't know if it gives you her specific age, but you know she's post high school so she's in her late teens or early twenties, as well as a werewolf of the same age who identifies as non-binary and these two characters knew each other's children but then uh, the werewolf's family moved away so you know their lives went in separate directions and they're now back for a very magical purpose, something dark, something darkly magical is going on in their town and it involves werewolf magic. So they come back in contact with their like childhood friend, this young witch, and they develop a bond that goes beyond friendship and they enter into a relationship with one another. So this is queer, fantasy, cutesy, but also with a hint of darkness, graphic novel. That's how I would summarise it and it does all of those things really well, like it's a lovely uh, mixture of those things, like a really excellent, you know, potion of ingredients that come together to make something really enjoyable and if you like any of those things in your graphic novels I think you'll really like this. I also really enjoyed the art style, I think it, it suited the storyline because it was cute but it wasn't like too bubbly and childish. So I had a semblance of maturity to it even though it, it did encapsulate what I felt like was quite a cute story. Oh and I also wanted to mention that the witch character has hearing aids so she is hearing impaired and something I was actually struggling to find a little bit when I participated in the last Queer Lit Readathon with characters who had disabilities so I thought this one was also worth pointing out as having that aspect to it as well and it's really awesome to see that representation and particularly if that's something that you're looking for in your literature. But that's all I really have to say on this one. Really enjoyed it, very cute, very enjoyable. At first I thought it was going to be part of a series but now I think maybe it's a standalone although you can correct me if I'm wrong about that. I did read one other graphic novel though so I'll mention that here and that is Goliath by Tom Gold. I borrowed this from my library and I need to go and return it this afternoon actually once I'm finished filming this video but I thought it would be good to show you the illustration style inside. So this is a very simplistic illustration style. I say simplistic in terms of its effect but I do realise that illustrations like these are not simplistic to create, especially ones that are going to appeal to a reader. A lot of work goes into creating something simple quite often. And this one is of course based on the legend of David and Goliath and instead we follow the story of this giant Goliath and it's Tom Gold's own little twist on this story. In it Goliath is a soldier but he is far 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 bigger than any of the rest of the men serving alongside him. So the uh, army come up with this plan to kind of use his height as an intimidation tactic and send him out to challenge somebody from uh, the army that they are currently battling against in the hopes that they will be scared by his size and surrender. So it's about Goliath challenging the other army and waiting to see if anyone comes to stand up against him. However, Goliath is not a fighter. He, I think, describes himself as the second or third worst swordsman in their army. He far prefers to just do the admin work. He is not a fighter despite his size and what people might think about him. But he's a soldier and he does what he's told and he's just hoping that nobody actually bothers to come and challenge him. And I won't say any more than that because if you do know the legend then you kind of know what comes near the end of this book. I had actually kind of forgotten the story of David and Goliath so it was a little bit of a surprise to me but when um, it did kind of unravel I was like oh yeah that's what happened. But it's a little bit wry, it's a little bit witty and it's a little bit sad and again the art style matches perfectly with the tone of the graphic novel so also really enjoyed this one. But moving on from graphic novels I have four novels to talk to you about, two of which are fantastic 
fantasy and two of which are romance, so I'll start with the two fantasy books. First up is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. This is a young adult fantasy novel that I have heard a lot of buzz about over the past year or so since it came out. She recently had a second standalone fantasy book come out, which again is getting people really excited and I also really want to read that one. This one was available on Scribd, which I have a subscription to, so I decided to read it on there and I think the other book is available on audiobook on script, so I'm definitely going to listen to that because I really enjoyed this. It is actually really a romance as well as a fantasy book. It does remind me in some ways of uh, Emma Hamm's books like The Heart of Fae or Holly Black's Cruel Prince series because it very much interacts with the realm of the Fae and the fairies and if you're into Fae and fairies then this is the kind of book that you'll probably like. It's set in an unidentified historical period where our protagonist is a portrait pre painter and she's the most skilled at her craft that there is currently living so everybody comes to her for their portraits particularly the fae court because they cannot paint for themselves they cannot create anything that you know they can't make clothes they can't uh, paint pictures they can't do anything crafty or arty they rely on buying all of that stuff or bartering for all of that stuff from the humans and instead they give them kind of little magical gifts that often come with negative side effects but you know the standard fae mo when it comes to fairy world books <laughs> they're always a little bit more dastardly than you might think and she has recently been commissioned to paint the portrait of one of the fae princes and over the time period in which she's painting this portrait they develop a sort of like close bond, uh, a friendship that is potentially something more however love is outlawed between fairy and humankind in this world so she never really considers it potentially being anything more than just you know fun banter <laughs> hanging out with a pal I guess until she does something that she should not have done and that is paint human emotion into this painting of the fae prince and when he then takes his portrait to show the courts and his people he is incredibly embarrassed when it's unveiled because it depicts him in a really vulnerable way fae aren't supposed to feel it human emotions and uh, because of this portrait he is incredibly angry and he goes back to his portrait artist and tells her that she has to come with him to the realm of the Fae and defend herself and say what she did was a mistake in order to repair his reputation. But like I said, it is a romance in that it is about these two characters' relationships and some of the peril and the tension that they come up against in their journey in the fairy world from the human world. But Again, if you don't like romance, you might not like that. If you like like a fun fantasy YA romance, then this is excellent. And it's also nice to find standalone fantasy books. I don't come across them as much. And that's why recently I did a video recommending standalone fantasy books. So you can check that out if you're looking for more recommendations of that ilk. But other than the fantasy and the romance and the world building, my favorite thing about this book was I actually found it quite funny and intentionally so. I thought there was um, quite a lot of witty humor expressed in the author's writing, particularly in um, the things that were going on inside the head of our female protagonist. And, and if you've read it, you'll know what I mean, but her little sisters are fantastic such a fun addition to the story but as you can tell this one hit the spot for me and I will be checking out more by this author I then read another fancy book this one being inspired by the fairy tale of Bluebeard and it was The Seventh Bride by T. Kingfisher this is my third fairy tale retelling by T. Kingfisher and this one was slightly different in certain ways because this is one isn't a romance so the other two I read by her were Beauty and the Beast retelling and Snow Queen retelling which had romances as part of their plotline this one does not so if you're looking for fantasy that does not have a romance plotline um, and instead just has a feisty female protagonist trying to get herself out of a dire situation, protect those she loves and unravel some mysteries, then this one is for you. It, it does remind me of her Beauty and the Beast retelling which was called Briony and Roses though because it has the same dark tone. So again the author definitely goes for some semblance of humour in her writing but at the same time she also paints a very dark picture of a very dark world and she's clearly trying to get under your skin and make you feel unsettled. Now I didn't actually love this as much as her other two. Bryony and Roses has been my favourite of her so far, followed by the Snow Queen, followed by this, which I enjoyed but didn't love. I think simply because there was a lot of characters and a lot of mysteries squeezed into quite a short book and I would have 
preferred more exploration of some of the side characters' backstories and motivations and characters. That's what would have brought the book up for me, but it still had a lot going for it. And particularly if you like creepy fairy tale retellings with a strong female leads and no romances, I think you will like this maybe even more than I did. But it's hard not to compare a book to the other works you've read by an author, and for me this one wasn't as good as her other two. I will still continue to read works by T. Kingfisher however and I don't by any means think this is a bad book. I just think I could have felt more emotionally invested in it if a little bit more time had been spent developing certain aspects of the storyline. But like I said I then had two romance books to review for you and the first one will come as no surprise as it is the second in Tessa Dare's Spindle Cove historical romance series, A Week to be Wicked. So I reviewed the first book in this series in my mid-month wrap up and I shared with you how much I very much enjoyed this. I, I started reading Tessa Dare because of a man over at the Naughty Librarian and I'm so pleased she introduced me to her because these books are so much fun. They are set in the 1900s and my one sentence pitch for this book to you is that it is like Jane Austen if all the female characters were giving the middle finger to the status quo. It has that immersive period setting which I really enjoy in historical fiction and classics. It feels like escapism from the modern or everyday world to me in the same way that I enjoy fantasy for that reason. But Tessa Dare doesn't bind her female characters by uh, the restrictions placed on women of that time period as much as a classic would do because it's trying to be more historically ac accurate. Now, because of that, these books do sometimes veer away from the historically accurate. I think the actual backdrop and the periods are quite well done and quite well researched, but Tessa Dare isn't trying to write accurate historical fiction. Although in a way something I enjoy about this kind of historical fiction, where the characters do act a little bit outside the boundaries of their time, is that it does very much acknowledge that women during that time period were human beings who had vast array of emotions and maybe perhaps did want to, like, push against the things that were pushing them down and the restrictions upon them and I really enjoyed that and one of the things in the first book I really enjoyed was her exploration of the way women's mental health was treated. This one doesn't deal with that so much although we do have a female protagonist who is a geologist. She's a female protagonist who wants to be a scientist, who's an intellectual through and through. She has signed up to the uh, National Geological Society under, well under her name but using initials so nobody knows that she's a woman, they've all assumed that she's a man and she has made a phenomenal geological discovery that she is determined to go and present at the conference in Edinburgh. However, young women can't just go travelling across the country by themselves so she convinces a local gentry soldier to accompany her by, well it's not really blackmail but she sort of like wheedles her way into making him come along with her and he has a reputation as a bit of a rake. He sleeps around, he has no intention of getting married so she believes the perfect cover for their mission would be to let everybody believe that they have eloped together because she's not really interested in her uh, reputation as a marriageable young lady. She's only interested in like having an adventure and presenting her discoveries at this conference and of course as they are travelling together Together, their falsified love affair becomes a little bit realer than they expected it to. Both have actually been eyeing each other from the sidelines for a while and they do not seem like the kind of characters who would ever come together normally. They don't seem from the outside to be a perfect fit but they find that they bring out the best in one another and they have so much fun together and it's so much fun as a reader following their developing romance throughout the pages of this book. But then lastly I read Misadventures of a Curvy Girl by Sierra Simone. I picked this up on the recommendation of Chelsea over at Chelsea Dolling Reads. I saw this on her channel and at the moment I'm buddy reading another one of this author's books so thought hey you know what I'll give this one a go too. I think it was like 99p on the Kindle and this one is definitely about 70% smut but it actually has some phenomenal characters and some really great um, background plot that makes it an excellent read and made me enjoy it as somebody who doesn't read in this genre a ton. Our protagonist is a young woman that's been sent to take the photographs for a marketing campaign her firm are, are conducting about Kansas, I think it's Kansas, anyway it's somewhere rural in the US and she's been sent to a farm belonging to her boss's friend to take photographs. But naturally she's a city girl, her car gets stuck in the mud, she gets rescued by this handsome farmer and they develop immediate lust for one another. However, things are a little bit more complicated than she might have expected because there's another hunky farmer in residence. All of that a little bit cheesy and it is complete insta-love slash lust 
immediately. There is also, I noticed near the end, essentially like, you know, a fairy godmother character that comes out of nowhere, not that they're in any way magical, but simply a female character that exists purely to um, expound some of the author's own feelings and perfectly legitimate opinions on body positivity and just to give voice to that in a moment when the other, in a moment when the protagonist needed to hear them, which is also a little bit unrealistic. But this book is not supposed to be realistic. Everything happens a little bit quicker in romance books than it would necessarily happen in real life and as long as you can suspend your disbelief when it comes to the speed at which relationships develop between characters then I think you might enjoy this one. Of course as the title implies this is all about a curvy girl. She's a plus size woman and she spent a long time very insecure about her body. She was in a really unhealthy emotionally abusive relationship with a man who constantly belittled her and and then her family, well it doesn't really mention the rest of her family but her sister was constantly trying to get her to diet and she's recently made a bid to escape these confines of other people's opinions. She started dressing the way she wants, she got out of that unhealthy relationship, she's tried to kind of cut ties as much as she can with her sister, she stopped going to the gym instead of doing things like dancing classes that she's actually interested in and just stopped punishing herself to try and make society happy. Now one of the things I did enjoy about this book though is that the journey towards body positivity is not painted as an overnight change. You don't suddenly wake up, feel better, better about yourself, you don't read a book and feel better about yourself, you might feel better about yourself some days and not other days and you see the protagonist's ongoing struggle with her insecurities and kind of past trauma when it comes to um, her size and the way she's been treated throughout the book. It doesn't all just miraculously change overnight, although there is that fairy godmother uh, moment I mentioned <laughs> nearer the end. But overall I think it, it has a really fantastic message and even as somebody that's more of a mid-sized body than necessarily a plus size body type, I could completely relate to a lot of her struggles and her insecurities and I thought it was awesome seeing her come into her own um, amidst this relationship with two men that, again, she fell in love with in like, the space of the day. <laughs> But that's okay, we're like just going with that. But yeah, that's all the books that I read in the second half of July. I would love to hear from you if you have read or are interested in reading any of them. I'd also love to hear from you if you've read any books by any of these authors and would recommend them in case I'm interested in checking them out more by them. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys!